What's up, everybody? It is week 17. It is the last regular season, regular season week of the season. So uh, we are here on the Swole Cast, David Kitchen, Dan Gasper, Mr. Total 05, Peter Overzet, Davis Maddock. And uh, let's just start off the show with, uh, with Peter. You had an important announcement yesterday, and uh, I would just like to say welcome. Welcome to the uh, welcome to my side. Yeah, no, uh, not to let's not make things confusing. I'm not doing flash drafts or anything, but (laughs) I am. um, I I retired from from GPPs. Uh, I I had enough of it. The kind of the volatility, the variance, it had start started to get to me, Dave. And so uh, I am now exclusively a cash game player. I've been accepting uh, head to heads. I'm making all the rounds this week. We're talking to Cardi later in the week. We're going on the Gill cast and um, I'm excited to give out the best plays on the Swole cast today. Yeah. So week 17, typically there's a lot of moving parts, moving pieces. Uh, You feel like the information there's, there's an edge there. Oh, Hugh, this is, I call this an information preseason week four. Basically for Levitan? It is like preseason all over again. It's where the true news information grinders can get an edge on the people. I mean, all of these people sending me head to heads. Do they realize the amount of news I'm injecting into my veins around the clock? I just think people don't realize they're going to get outworked by me on a slate like this. Tuttle, how do you feel about uh, cash games this week? I mean, I'm just here to learn from the best. Yeah, Um, well... (laughs) That, that's what I'm here for. I, I don't have any strong takes yet. I'm just, you know, I got my pad of paper here somewhere and I'm, I'm ready to take notes. Yeah. Uh, Davis, you were saying before the show that you were actually annoyed because all of your $2 head to heads were full and you can't accept any more $2. Yeah. Well, so like I, I obviously am trying to glom off of Peter's success as per usual. So I'm trying to get more games, but some people are sending me, you know, $1 games, $2 games, $3 games. And I, I cannot accept them due to the maximum amount of, of games that I'm allowed to play already being filled. You know what? You know, when like a tweet goes viral and someone plugs their SoundCloud in there, Davis yeah. has been replying to all my tweets with his DraftKings user name. You know what's okay. Do you want to know what's even more funny though, is I would also love to play some of these people on FanDuel, but like the, the labyrinthian system of sending an invite for a game on FanDuel is so tough that no one will do it. Like no one will take the X, ex- like DK just makes it so much easier to send someone a game. So Davis, do you have open head to heads available f- for people to pick up right now on DraftKings? I, I should. Yeah. Okay. So instead of people just sending you an invite, just, just scoop them. Just well, scoop I, Davis. I will take, um, you know, tens, twenties, fifties, one oh nines from, um, people who are sending them as well. <laughs> I love it. Bitcoin Davis up to the one Oh nines. You you'll accept like a maximum amount of one Oh nines. Um, what's your, what's your threshold? If it's someone I know is bad, I would go up to one K, but I don't, some of these people, I don't know how bad they are. Wow. Here's what I love about this is that, um, you know, (laughs) Peter obviously is an entertainer. This is an entertaining bit for him. Let's However, just see how for much Davis, I have in play. It's starting to blur the lines. Of an expensive bit, Dave. <laughs> However, Davis, this is legit. Like he he really thinks that he has the edge this week. No, I don't. Games. I I think that I think that just in general, if I'm gonna play NFL, like if I'm gonna play cash, anyways, I just need to be trying to get as much down against random people and add dads as possible because uh by i don't know if you know this dave but by week 14 15 16 the head-to-head lobbies on dk they're looking pretty pretty sparse like it's it's there's not much there's not much soft action out left there so all right uh so <laughs> here is uh here's here's my question as far as like narrative street have you brushed up on all the narratives peter you know what? Uh, one of the big things to monitor this week is the motivation and yeah, motivation. what teams are motivated. <laughs> and so I've been reading lots of articles about motivation, uh, but I'm actually looking to you to help me out with some of these narratives because sometimes I miss these. You know, a guy is 42 yards away from 1,637 rushing yards, and I might miss that. So, what are the big narratives I need to keep a lookout for here? Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I was asking you. You're the guy grinding the cash game nuggets. 
Yeah, so I, mean, Dave's been I, I have on, a narrative. I have on one. vacation, and uh, I'm just here to learn. Uh, go ahead, Tuttle. Justin Jefferson has some some narrative around him with yardage records for, okay. for rookie rookie receiver. He's 46 yards of the team record, and like 110 or so of the most receiving yards by a rookie pass catcher since the 1970 merger. That's courtesy of uh, our friend Rich Rebar. This is okay. this is Justin Jefferson. This is Justin Jefferson, yeah. yeah. So I was I think just you could lock him in for one ten. I was I was just talking to Drewby actually, and we were trying to figure out like what Minnesota wanted to do for him, and we did not have this stat pulled up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and project him in the Daily Road Optimizer right now for 111 yards. I'm just gonna just gonna it's get gonna him happen. Right there. Well, I don't know if you All guys right. heard. Uh, I was grinding the news, and uh, Dalvin Cook actually isn't going to play this week, so I am boosting Jefferson's target projection, even uh, outside of the narrative. So, Davis, I'd actually boost him up to about 118, 119. I, I actually am am projecting Jefferson and Thielen for about 2% less than their averages just because um, I, I, I'm trying to do that with most of the starters because like, if it's the fourth quarter, we might get some Kyle Slaughter action, I think. Are you guys struggling with doing projections this week as much as I am? I mean, things just keep getting flipped on its head right and left. I have to go back to the drawing board every five minutes, but you know, that's the cross we bear in week 17. Yeah. You know, I, it's, a, it's a game of inches, Pete. How many times have you already update updated your, uh, your initial lineup that you put in? Oh man, Dave, my shell is in constant <laughs> flux. So, so we added Pete to the Gilcast group chat. Um, and it's just been an extended bit about Pete's shell, more or less. Um, so it's been good. <laughs> All right. Um, before we get into Overzet's overview of the week, uh, we because there is the the highest over under, Peter. You know, is of course it's um it's that game with uh, the Titans and um, yeah the Colts. David, this oh, is you actually... don't even know who the Titans are playing this week, oh, David. My gosh. <laughs> If there was ever a show for you to just make every position a discussion about the Titans game, this is actually a good week for you to do it. Uh, no, well, they're, before they're, they're playing uh, the Texans, actually. Texans, and the reason yeah. I know that is because Deshaun Watson was popping in my floor projection yeah. optimals that I was running <laughs> earlier. I, I didn't know how how uh, how much the J.J. Watt motivation factor also um, comes it, into play there. But it is the highest it is the highest uh, total. But before we we do that. Because speaking of that, the the Titans, it was just the ultimate letdown Sunday night. Um, Did you get a comfort blizzard, as I suggested? Uh, no, I didn't get a, a, a comfort blizzard, but there was some cheese dip that was how's in the, the fridge. How's, how's the holiday season treating the weight loss bet for you, bud? I enjoy the holiday season. You know, I enjoy the holiday season. I had uh, some relatives who were like, wow, you're looking really thin. And I'm like, thanks. And then by, by the 27th, what was <laughs> It's actually my six-year-old. She wanted more uh, Christmas presents. But uh, no, the holiday season was was really good. I enjoyed it, and I'm excited. New year, new beginnings. Excited to get back on uh, back I, on I the I knew this, this week was going to be so crucial for our bet because I dropped another pound this week, and I bet yeah. I bet you you added on four or five. Yeah, Davis, I was, I was actually happy that I um, – I was, I was happy that – I have been able to motivate you to be healthier yeah. until after the show last week, whenever you stopped, whenever they stopped recording and you took a big puff of your, uh, <laughs> your vaporizer or whatever it was, your, your vape pen. I don't know what it was, but like, I, I feel bad. Bro, I'm I feel a, like I'm, I've, I'm I've now driven you, you back why into. Why are you putting me, why are you putting me on blast? I'm a role model for these people. Why are you putting me on blast? Well, I'm, I'm hoping Davis that the pressure can kind of get you off. I I want you to commit to not doing any more vaping until the end of this bet. And in, in good faith. In good okay. faith. Speaking of in good faith, Pete and I also I gave him an advantage in our bet. I skipped I skipped a day in our bet and he immediately gave me back uh a, a skip the next day. It was uh the watching the watching the mental uh game play out there in real time was fascinating, Pete. Um, this is all good and all, but the chat just won't stop asking when uh, Dave's going to recap kind of the bubble championship on underdog. I <laughs> yeah. know. So that's what I was getting at. Okay. That's what I was getting at. Uh, congratulations <laughs> to Peter for uh, just 
<laughs> Boy, I thought I legit had a shot going into Wait, Sunday night. You just said congratulations to Peter Ford. Okay, dot, well, dot, let me, dot, I had a legit shot. Well, let me this. let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. I thought I had a legit shot. And then Peter comes in with Devontae Adams and Steph Diggs. Just, I mean, you talk about the ultimate guys, and he climbed because I will I will be honest. Or <laughs> Earlier in Sunday, I was a little mad at Peter because I'm like, you're not pulling your weight. Like, come on. Like, your second running back was like Jarek McKinnon or something like that. Yeah, and then by he the made end, it into my lineup. By the end of it, I was in tears. <laughs> I was in tears because none of the Titans showed out like like I thought they would, and I, I, I didn't do well. But uh, Peter, congrats to the top 10. Also, congrats to Peter for winning the inaugural Draft Sharks Invitational something. That, that'll do dave and let let the people <laughs> let the people remember you did have five percent of my action you yep. know minus five percent of yours and then you're also getting a five percent gift for me so yeah. i need to think about fifty dollar gift ideas yeah. here for yeah, david i've Kitchen. already been thinking about some twelve dollar and fifty cent <laughs> gift ideas get him get him get him a uh, a dairy clean gift card uh, uh, yeah All kitchen right, if so i let's... if i if i post made it like fried chicken to your house do you would you eat it sure yeah <laughs> okay good do to it know. are you gonna do it maybe depends on how close this no gets. you have to you have to commit to it you have to commit to it right now no okay. kitchen's just gonna use it to feed his family for the week <laughs> <laughs> no I, I will eat it i will eat it live on the swole cast okay oh. i'll do it I'll, I'll i'll postmate food to your house for the show next week i'll commit to it okay good all right. A lot of faith, assuming we won't be canceled by next week. <laughs> Dude, the cash, the cash game show. This is the cash game show. People <laughs> right. are going to be begging for this show next week. Davis, you already mentioned the uh, the Titans. Um, do you legit think that they are in a, a really good spot, having the highest over under and I, something I to play think for? that I think that Tannehill, AJ Brown, Corey Davis, Johnu Smith are just like the the absolute jams um because because d hember is going to find himself with some massive ownership and then i i already told pete i i think that it's setting up for a great psychological torture chamber week for him where derrick henry must win game against the houston texans the week he decides to play cash games why you could why are we concerned about derrick henry's ownership <laughs> well we're you and i are not tuttle and dave are yeah okay can just plug uh, I'm not concerned about it. Derek Henry's ownership. It's just a auto plug and play for this guy. Yeah. So where do we start this show at? The quarterbacks? Uh, yeah, we're starting with with well we're, with the overview. We're talking about the overview, and so that's why we're talking about the Titans. Title, you've been you've been a little quiet back there. So uh, what's what's your take on this week? All considered. Yeah, I'm just watching the Badgers play. You know, on this screen. Um, and make grinding uh, Liverpool showdown on the other. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so what, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just move on to No, I have notes. I am prepared for this. I'm okay, excited for obviously. week 17. All right. You know, well, I took what notes are your notes on, on the yeah, quarterback read position? Note. Read us a yeah. note. <laughs> um, my note is Justin Jefferson is 46 yards short of the team rookie yeah. record and <laughs> under 10 yards. <laughs> All right. I what actually, about the quarterback I do, position? I do have the motivation set out. Mm -hmm. I have the rest teams kind of placed to the side with Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Kansas City. Um, so you know, I I think it's uh I think it's a pretty easy week. It's actually just going based on the teams that have motivation. And then you can throw games out there that like the Rams in, in Arizona who you know aren't gonna score any points. They're they're the teams that are motivated, but they're not gonna score any points. I think where the line is out there, there's like they're like at like a forty point total, and that is not very good. Um, so yeah, just focus on teams with motivation, and then even better teams that are going to score lots of points, like the Tennessee Titans. Okay, um, I was surprised that you didn't mention any Bears in the uh, the intro. Yeah, I mean they're going to get their poop kicked in. I can't yeah. swear because my kids are watching the show. Uh, they're going to get their poop kicked in by the Packers. <laughs> Are the kids no, watching don't. it for the green screen? Yes, that is exactly why they're watching it. <laughs> All right, uh, quarterbacks, Davis. So, what are some of the quarterbacks you like this week? Cam Newton against the Jets. Yeah, not not playing, <laughs> not playing Cam. Um, I think one thing I I want to do this week is play 
Lamar naked in tournaments just because I was kind of thinking like, Week 17 NFL is a little bit like NBA in the sense of like, there just are going to be 4k running backs, 3k wide receivers who project for, you know, 5x, 6x their salary or whatever. So I'm thinking about correlating um, a little bit less and, and just, you know, really trying to play the best play. So I I think I am going to play Lamar naked in tournaments for the first time Uh, in terms of cash games though. uh, I, I probably want to play Deshaun Watson. You had me at cash games. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. he's, pop, he's popping in the floor optimals. Are you not concerned about his injury last week? Yeah, I'm a little concerned about it. Davis, did you know that he got injured last week? Yes, but he came back in. He came, he, he got, he got banged up in their second to last drive and then came back in on the Hail Mary drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they, they just don't have much to play for except for JJ Watts speech. Well, they have, maybe that's, they, maybe that's what you're, you're wanting. They haven't had anything to play for in six weeks. Right. But I mean, especially week 17, um, like John McClain originally said that he didn't even know if Deshaun Watson would play this week. Well, that uh, obviously would obviously, did, that would obviously change my perception of the situation. Well, yeah, but my, I guess my guess is like, I mean, how, how much do you want to ride on this guy? Do you want to know how bullshit DraftKings is? Chad Henney is 5,100. Like, why can't – could we just have one 4K quarterback this week? Is it seriously yeah, too much There's to a $4,300 quarterback this week. There's lots of 4K week. quarterbacks this week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 4X in cash games, Pete. Duck Hodges? Is it Duck Hodges? They're highly motivated, and – um I, I think Duck is uh, – he's shaping up to be one of the best points per dollar values on the slate, Dave. Wait, I, I missed it. Is it really Duck Hodges no, as the quarterback? No, Okay. <laughs> no, what happened? There's some motivation right there. Mason Rudolph against the Cleveland Browns. Wolford's also under 5K. Yeah, he – I mean, if Wolford was was dead 4K, I'd be putting him in my cash game shell right now because he, he scoots a little bit. Yeah, he's got some swag, I think. Yeah. No, well, I wouldn't say that, but he does run. What do you guys think of Chris Strebler if Kyler, Kyler Murray doesn't play? Kyler, 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 Kyler's, Kyler's, Kyler said he's playing, but Strebler, Strebler was um, like a total hair on fire quarterback in the CFL. Like he he does not check down. So he would he would have kind of been interesting, I think. I'm going to need you to grind the news a little bit harder. Um, cash game, Pete. Yeah, and I actually, I'm, I'm really taking it on the chin in the chat. Frank Wright, why does this guy, Pete, never take anything serious? He's very obnoxious. I, I This is the most serious I've ever been on this show. I'm sorry I did a duck call, but I'm here to win cash games, guys. All right, I, I don't let's know get what... some boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, let's boots on the ground talk from you as far as Cam Newton goes. Yeah. Because he is very cheap, obviously on shaky ground, but against the Jets... Which, I mean, is it too risky for you in cash, but maybe something you would consider if you were playing tournament I, games? I mean, the GPP bros can do whatever the hell they want um, with their 1% plays. But no, there's no way I'm touching Cam Newton in cash. Watch my cash game quarterback get pulled at half. Yeah, that sounds like a blast, Dave. <laughs> what if they? What if he's doing really good? Well, then the GPP bros can reap the rewards. I'm trying to get the highest projected floor in at the quarterback position. Cam does not check that box for well me. it's it's probably lamar then like lamar will end up being because they they have to win this is a, a win and you're in spot for the ravens lamar will run i don't know he'll get 23 points a lot of the time here tuttle any other quarterback plays for you um it's ugly because he's been terrible but uh pairs well with uh davis's favorite player who's now dirt cheap everywhere you can you can tell us. Gonna let Russ cook with DK. Oh. I no, I'm done. I I'm so done with the Seahawks. You gotta man. do it. Do it. You do. You do. Like and here's the thing: if DK Metcalf went off for 11 receptions, Metcalf. 211 yards, and two touchdowns this week, and I didn't have him in something for like significant dollars, like I'd have to walk off a plank. It would be really bad. I, I thought he it. did good in his two games against Ramsey. Um so dude i'm still going through counseling for these games bro i i I, it's pretty triggering of you to bring that up all right let's you say wait until we get ramsey versus uh adams in the playoffs right oh my 
Oh, what, dude, what, what does the PFF wide receiver cornerback matchup chart say there? What does it just explode? Does it not? Is it just a 404 loading page that week? If that happens? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it will be able to process those kind of dueling narratives. Well, what about, what about Brady, right? Brady just got, I mean, I don't know. Seems like he throws a bunch. I'm not going to play him at all. Cause I hate him, but he does seem like a good double stack. All right, well, let's make a uh, a lineup. So just go to DraftKings. Well, let's let's just make dot com. Ca- let's make Pete's yeah. cash game. In the show. fifty in the fifty fifty, there is the five dollar double up single entry. It is uh, eleven point four thousand people. So I'm, I'm just going to enter the lineup in this. Uh, Peter, you can start out. Who's uh, who's the safe floor, maybe high ceiling guy for you this week? You know who's, who's the guy the that I who's you know the who, core of your cash game right now? You know who I said I said this in the uh in the group chat. Yeah. Davis has his guy at 4200. I yeah. have my guy at 4200 coming off of a big touchdown last week. DJ Chark is shaky. Currently I have LaVisca Chenault in my shell. Cash game cash game shell Pete. Cash game lock. Early early week lock. Early week lock for Visco. I was tilting him for a very long time last week. No, dude, we got there. It was never in doubt. Our lineup last week was never in doubt, Tuttle. We we had it. We knew. I was tilting him for about the first 58 minutes of that game. Yeah. I, I am honestly begging everyone to dupe this. Just play the best lineup. It does not matter. I'm begging you. Please dupe this. All right, Davis, you're up next. Um, all right, I'm going to go with a 4K running back here. Just announced that Mike Davis and Christian McCaffrey are not going to play in week 17 for the Carolina Panthers. We have one Mr. Rodney Smith entering our lineup. Way to grind the news, man. It's impressive. Well, you know, you guys, you guys tilt my multitasking until it really comes through like this. So we got Rodney Smith and, and Visco. Yeah, Celsius. so we can we can yeah. play <laughs> play wherever you want. Play wherever you want. Those- those guys are the ones that we're uh, we're saving on. So Tuttle, you're up next. Um, I'm gonna go with the Justin Jefferson narrative here. I like love it. Love it. Just gonna lock in that 110 plus. Yeah. Yards. So 110 yards is uh, 11 plus 3, 14. So probably about 18 point floor for him there. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, a guy who you want to depend on when things are are tough it is it, it will be january but that doesn't change that dehember is coming back for revenge guaranteeing a playoff spot 9400 they're just going to ride him he looked pretty good against the uh the packers he didn't look bad you're right he did not look bad it's just like game script got away from them do you think do you think they would be do you think they would be better if they just gave aj Dillon like 25 carries i don't know aj Dillon looks pretty yeah, looks he looked pretty man he looks pretty manly AJ Dillon, there, i've <laughs> listen if i could get just some sort of uh rake back for all my aj Dillon best ball shares it'd be great because he looked amazing can, can we report I, the fbi on this i feel no, I davis feel like- Davis, calm down. I feel that, like this is an so overextension of your privileges. No, a, have you seen AJ Dillon's thighs? My goodness. I literally it, told Pete on his podcast that I saw a picture of AJ Dillon at practice this summer and moved him up five spots in my rankings. <laughs> I've seen his thighs. I mean, in the cold, man, he is. It, that was a sight to behold. All right. You want to know somebody who does TikTok the right way? Thank you. AJ Dillon. <laughs> Oh, is that? Are you throwing shade at the Steelers wide receivers on TikTok? Uh, I mean, they kind of use it for their own personal game. Corvette, and Corvette. Yeah, yeah, they're very showy about it. AJ Dillon, <laughs> on the other hand, he's just a very giving individual. He gives away. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, Pete, you're up. Who's the second staple of your cash game lineup? I mean, I think we got to get it. I know we're spending a lot of money, um, and that's fine, but I'm trying to get the highest floor, the highest ceiling coming off of six touchdowns, highly motivated Saints team trying to get this number one seed. Let's jam Alvin Kamara in the flex here. This is looking like quite the shell. Did you know he had uh, six touchdowns? I um, I saw that. Um, I left the uh, Christmas dinner table, and uh, I watched every single one of them. All right. We have to save a little bit here left with 3,800 per player. Um, Davis, you're up. 
Um, all right, so I think that we should play a min price wide receiver, right? Thirty eight hundred per player with the key so I, position. Not I have, yet. I have a, I have a week seventeen hero from last year for us. We have Cole Beasley out with a foot injury. We have John Brown on the COVID list. We have the Bills likely not needing to play their starters due to the Steelers benching their starters for week seventeen. We are going to resurrect from the dead. Duke Gabriel? Williams is not. He's not on the slate. Duke Williams will be added. Duke Williams will be added to the slate at some points, but we'll go Gabriel Davis for now. Oh, you were going to go Duke Williams, and then you realized yeah, Duke, that Duke he Williams, was in the player pool. <laughs> Duke, Duke Williams last year had seven receptions so for 123 gonna... yards, and Robert Foster had zero receptions for zero yards. Um, and I'll, quite I'll the build up. David, Davis has a guy not in his player pool in his shell already, which is incredibly <laughs> impressive. Well, you guys know I've already co- I've already contacted my DK rep to have Duke Williams added in to my player pool. All right, man. Titans at twenty two hundred to pair with Derrick Henry is what we need. They're going to be so owned, but you know, in cash games, you take the free square. So we have QB. If we do that, we have QB and tight end left with forty seven fifty. That'll work. We yeah, we got to play. We got to like play. We got to play Trubisky and Komet. Done. Done deal. No. We I don't know we, how we, I feel about opening myself up to that kind of stack variance in cash, Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got. So we got Trubisky, Komet. Um, and then we play, I guess, maybe the Dolphins defense against Matt Barkley. You love to see it. All right. Uh, Peter, who's he? We got 9,500 left for two players. Who's your quarterback or tight end? Okay. Um, but don't in cash, don't you sometimes like to stack to capture the upside? Uh, you just play the best, best plays in cash. Yeah. I, um, you know, I am actually thinking about running two lineups across my head to heads. One yeah. that gives me access to more of a ceiling. Yeah. We call, that, week, we call him week four Levitan. Yeah. Um, what do we, how about we go with Austin Hooper here? How did he, how was he not just like the absolute lock of locks last I week? am. I, I, of all the dumb things I've done in DFS, dumb, um, yeah. not, not playing Austin Hooper in cash feels like one of the dumbest. All right, it was inter- it was interesting because I was going to suggest Baker for the quarterback position as well. Mm. So, there we go. Uh, you got fifty seven hundred left. You got Carr, Trubisky, Cam, or Baker. Pick one. I, I will just toss out there that the Browns are popping in my motivation model. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, highly yeah, yeah. Movi- so, motivated to get into the playoffs here. Yes, but I actually Davis, really like you- Nick Chubb this week. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Davis, would you agree with Baker as the quarterback out of those four options? Um, Trubisky is the cheap guy that I have my eyes on this week, but I don't really care because okay. this is not a serious cash game lineup, and that's all I'm here for. I don't know. It's not a bad cash game lineup. We should we should say, like, see who finishes higher, this cash game lineup or Davis's actual cash game lineup. So isn't it pretty obvious how – the bears are just going to like let everybody down. Like the, the, the story. Arc oh, they, they are going to get, they are good. I mean, Rogers was born to crush the city of Chicago. It's like all yes. he's ever done. I, I actually looked this up the other day. Um, Trubisky has only ever won once against the Packers. And it was like a disgusting game is back when Rogers was bad. All right. <clears throat> What do you guys think uh, at defense of just playing the Texans D? I mean, Tannehill was kind of really struggling on Sunday night. I already said the Titans at 2,200 to pair with Derrick Henry. Okay. We're getting that correlation in there. Yeah, I know. It's like there is a cash game correlation that is like your running back and your your defense when you talk defenses. All right. Um, let's move on to running backs. You already mentioned Rodney Smith. What about the Minnesota running back situation, Davis? Well, you know, as a news and information grinder, like Pete, you know, I just follow his lead. Um, you know, we're in the group chat. We're talking about all the ways this, this Viking situation can play out. So Alexander Madison has an appendectomy, misses two weeks, comes back, gets a concussion. Mike Boone has been the primary backup this entire time. I was wondering if we're going to have a Boone take because that was your best ball takes as well. So, well, I don't know if that's true. Did I it was. Mike Boone in best ball? You said that you'd rather have Mike Boone than Madison. As well, Madison, the was one of the, Madison was one of the worst best ball picks all year. Um, to, like total nothing. But if 
Madison plays, he's 6,100. That's, I think, pretty thin on this slate. But Boone is 4K. Another wrinkle, though, and I want I want Pete's take on this as the narrative master. Amir Abdullah played 37% of the snaps in week 17 last year when it was Boone and Abdullah. And obviously, <gasps> this is a revenge game. Revenge game, yeah. Our boy Amir Abdullah. So what are we doing with the Abdullah Boone split in our projections, bud? But couldn't it also be a redemption game for Mike Boone because he let everyone down as chalk last year in the fantasy playoffs, right? Was that week 15 or 16? He, 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 he had like 30 yards and 11 touches in week 16, but then 17 for 148 and a touchdown in week 17. Okay, so he is the week 17 hero. Um, yeah. You know, I, I assume here uh, they're going to be getting lots of goal line looks. Justin Jefferson catching balls, uh, stepping out at the one. Uh, Boone's going to be the guy that comes in there and punches those in. So I, I don't want to get fancy play syndrome with Amir Abdullah here. I do think you just go with the guaranteed touches and, uh, and Mike Boone. All right. What about Malcolm Brown Davis? Yeah, he, he If acres doesn't play, he, I mean, I don't, he won't, I don't know if he'll leave the field to be honest. I don't know if you can play Xavier Jones or Raymond Calais in like basically a playoff game. The pain. I share this in our chat, the pain of, Daryl Henderson almost scoring and then having a guy stop him at the one and then him being hurt on that same play was too much for me last week. It was too much. Uh, Davis, I thought it was a good recommendation that you gave of him. Uh, I followed it. It didn't work out, but the process was correct. Trust the also process. lots of people thanking me for the, uh, the Texans, David Johnson love. Um, oh, come, come on. on. What? David John, I, I was a beneficiary of David Johnson last week, but I don't know if I've ever played a play that ran hotter. 31 DK points on 15 touches in a loss against the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why I've been promoting him the past few weeks. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk about any like high price running backs that you like this week, Tuttle. Yeah, there's no one really on the high end um, in a very good, any, any good games like Derrick Henry or Alvin Kamara. Yeah, gun to your head, Henry or Kamara. Uh, give me Kamara on uh, on DraftKings, right? I think so. I think so too. Yeah. What about Cash Game Pete? Thoughts? Yeah, uh, I know we mentioned the Browns guys. Uh, what about Jonathan Taylor? They also need to win. Yeah. He he his role too is just so locked and loaded now. He didn't need to catch any passes on uh on sunday versus the steelers uh but he's got the goal line work jordan wilkins is no longer a factor in this offense so uh, i think jonathan taylor is a pretty nice play at 7, he is he is the five star play of the week he'll i think he'll probably be the highest owned yeah i'm not not too concerned about that <sighs> <laughs> okay right. but uh, i think it's even better though to discuss which 4k running back do we want to play the most like because they're they're starting to be they're starting to be a bunch. When we got Malcolm Brown, we have Rodney Smith, uh, we have Mike Boone, Ty I, Johnson, Matt, Ty Johnson. Ty jo yeah. Don't forget Ty Johnson. The Michael P. Ryan and Frank Gore both out. I think Darwin is probably going to start for the Chiefs. Um, it would be because with because Le'Veon Le'Veon hurt his ankle last week, so it would be surprising to me if Daryl Williams played a bunch, given that you know if the Chiefs need a running back come the playoffs. Okay, here's what what do you think the optimal build's going to be? It'll be two 4K running backs and then an attempt to get uh Devonte and Kamara in with with Lamar on DK, I think. So here's here's um another guy that's really cheap. And I know that it could be dangerous, but what about some uh, what about spinning up a narrative for Zeke in week 17? uh the please don't take my job bro narrative <laughs> right it's like 6400 on dk he's got i mean he's got to be hearing some footsteps also maybe the front office wants to prove to people that there's a reason why they paid so much for him so i i think the problem with that is they can't afford to they can't afford to to fiff around in this game because if they win and the eagles win they're in the playoffs is it the real question uh, is if Zeke is any good at football anymore? And is it the answer? <laughs> no, the, the answer to that question is an unequivocal. No. 
Dave, All just right. imagine how my best ball team would have done if they would have let Pollard loose in that game. I mean, I had Pollard too. I had Pollard too. I probably would have uh, moved up. It, actually, Pollard doing well would have just crushed my spirit even more because I was fifth before that Sunday night game. I would have been like third and I would have just like had just everything. I tried to get you into my screenshot of the standings, but I just couldn't fit you in there, Dave. Yeah, he didn't want his, he didn't want his screenshot to look like a CVS receipt. <laughs> All right, uh, wide receivers. Let's talk about the cheap wide receivers. There's a there's a guy that we've talked about repeatedly. I mean, and I just there's saw... an there's an in in a truly infinite yes. number of cheap wide yeah. receivers. I w- I want to uh, warn people though about what happened two years ago. And Peter, I want to warn you especially because he was yeah. in he was like sixty or seventy percent owned. He was in everybody's cash games, and I don't even remember the guy's name. But he was. Oh, I know this situation. Roger was it? Roger donkey. Lewis. Yes, 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 yes. Roger oh, Lewis. Oh, the, the Giants. The Giants yep. two years ago. I mean, yes. last year. Last year was worse. It was Robert Foster and Duke Williams. One of them got zero DraftKings <laughs> points, and one of them got yeah. twenty six. Like that is much more of a harsh dichotomy. All and right. Now you're yeah, but Roger Duke Lewis Johnson into, play. into the player pool. <laughs> I am Lewis. literally manifesting it, bro. I am manifesting it. Right, so, Trying to get even on Duke Johnson. Duke Williams. Duke right? Williams, my bad. I yeah. mess up I'm messing up my Dukes. <laughs> Dukes up. So as far as the as far as like nothing's ever a lock until like you until they are actually like on until the field until because... Ro- until Robert Foster locks it up. Oh, because that, so, that, that I didn't painful. see that many like awesome low priced receivers. Maybe that's me. All right. Well, Maybe no. Just... Here's the guy it's... that's here's the guy that's currently popping in the RG model as far as like points to. Uh, divided fantasy points divided by dollar is Demir Bird. Okay, well, no. Yeah, you, I mean you can't do that, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that is. Kitchen, you and your GPP bros can play Cam to Demir Bird stacks. All right, this so week. I I this, might play a lot of Cam. Maybe if we week. get Stidham starting at quarterback. Then we'll <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this is this is pretty interesting. Um, the the Chiefs actually played the Chargers in Week 17 last year. Um, and McCall Hardman had one target in that game. So maybe maybe I need to slow my roll a little bit. He, I mean, he's got a big enough roll that like that's he... that's what I'm worried about because Watkins is banged up too. So I'm worried that okay, you guys ready for the galaxy brain? Please tell me you're ready. Pete, can you galaxy brain with me for five seconds before we go back to cash? Uh, I mean, I will indulge it, but I'm not gonna like Byron it. Pringle. There is only one pass catcher on this team who will not have a role in the playoffs no matter what who's perfect for a week 17 game ricky seals jones he's dead tight, ass isn't he a tight end tight he's yeah. a wide receiver in college though he can well, play the just... slot it's time to adjust your priors he's a tight end in all formats i don't i don't hate this take though actually wow i this i is, don't know terrible I don't. So this is the scenario in which I would actually play Ricky Seals Jones in a contest for. I money. got burned too much in Arizona by him. Okay, mute kitchen. The Chad Henney is already starting. If Watkins is a game day inactive, I th- literally think Ricky Seals because um, Marcus Kemp is on the injured reserve, and they won't. They played Demarcus Robinson as a starter too, so I don't think D Rob will play a ton either. So Ricky Seals Jones. The the chat is already listing off every other backup tight end that could stand a benefit from Travis Kelsey and these wide receivers being out. Well, Nick Nick Kaiser is uh Nick Kaiser is blocking only. He will right. he will be he will not catch any targets. Maybe you should respect your yelders though a little bit, Davis. Well. <laughs> yeah, that is, I mean that's real too. But what can you do? By the way, DK um I know if if Aguiar is listening to this, the most annoying thing that I've ever found in the world is that ricky seals jones is not minimum salary donald parham was minimum salary last week but they somehow like uh what was the movie where tom cruise is in it and they see crimes in the future minority report maybe they minority they minority reported me and they saw this take coming five miles away i just assumed uh levitan's still on the dk take and they give him you know the xfl guy at the stone men a little favor to their old pal <laughs> Hey Peter, are we gonna see um, a cash game review? Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. oh yeah. My I want plays, my wish those. plays, my dangerous plays. I'll I'll have it all broken down. And okay, I will, so Bobby, uh, Bobby Trees, aka Robert Woods, 
Davis, yes or no? 35% target share this week with Cooper Cup on the COVID list, probably. How's his whopper going to look? Oh, I don't know. Probably probably fine. Um, Hang on, real question about now that you said whoppers. Nate's been a little quiet on the Gilcast group chat I've been added to. Is this normal for him or am I ruining the vibe? No, he doesn't talk to us until 11 o'clock on Sunday. He literally will, like Sammy and I, Sammy and I will have full on conversations. We'll be checking in on each other's life, you know, ribbing each other. And then Nate will come in. Like Nate will probably do one text for every 20 that Sammy and I do. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't kind of, you know, messing things up in there. No vibe. Vibe's good, bro. Okay. All right. So cheap, cheap wide receivers, Tuttle. Just give me. So we never really actually got any good cheap wide receivers. Okay. 15 targets last week, Jerry Judy. You interested? Because yeah. that's a total. We, we don't have team. anything under 4K. Is my is my statement? As like solid. I think I think there are a couple decent ones in that 4K range. Jerry Judy. Um, maybe if you want to like get. Well, we will. We receiver. will get. What? Okay. All right. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Darius Slayton. Des Bryant. No. Ew. No, that's too no. thin, Davis. Hey, too mute. Thin for... <laughs> hey, uh, Devin, mute Davis, please. Um, I'll, I'll take far... Darius Slayton as my terrible take, though. Mm. I'll take that one. Okay. I mean, Eight plus you guys in your prayer yards. I'm cool with it. Of all the plays, um, Judy actually has another narrative. Can you can you name that narrative? That he dropped five receptions nope. last week. Nope. There, it's, it's it's pretty glaring. That he told people on Twitter that follow more people than they have followers not to talk to him? No. Nope. I hate Henry, Henry Ruggs. Judy, drafted above him. Judy there you I go. can respect There everybody. you go. What was it? Tuttle, I missed it. Tuttle Henry wins Ruggs it. drafted above him. Oh. Henry okay. Ruggs, was, his teammate, was drafted above him by the Raiders. Can I just say also, Jerry Judy's DraftKings profile picture is not very flattering? At not all. flattering? No. <laughs> also, um, I'll I have Aguiar s- change it. I saw on Siege's timeline. Uh, by the way, shout out to Siege. He he bit he beat Britt Divine in our Insiders Dynasty. Yeah, he did. And Britt <laughs> Britt is tilting. Oh, dude. He oh, thought, he's so oh Britt mad. Britt Britt's team is <laughs> so disgustingly good. He thought he just had it locked up. And so I, he has Kamara, right? He lost in a final with Kamara. I I don't know if he has uh, Kamara or not, but he. But I, was... I do know. I do know he's big mad. It he, was. He, <laughs> He, because he was always like, "Oh, I've won almost every week high score." And like, if you wanted to see someone lose in your league, it was this guy. <laughs> so I've heard stories about Britt's uh, behavior in dynasty leagues. It sounds like so, a real treat. So Britt, Britt loses the final and puts his entire team up for trade bait on NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever used the trade bait function uh, oh, in a dynasty league. Uh, Britt does it to tilt you though. Like if he has a player that goes off one week, he'll he'll or like news p- pops out, he'll put his like good player on the trade. So you'll get an email. Yeah, like Lashawn McCoy signs with the player. Buccaneers and he puts yeah. it on the trade bait. So you get an email that he has that player basically on his team. Um, anyways, Siege's timeline was about how Drew Locke has not been bad this year he's actually <laughs> taken a few steps forward which to me interesting okay which to me it was just saying uh it was just like siege trying to justify uh yeah. some of his prior drew lock takes i guess but anyways drew lock could be an interesting play this week against uh, the Raiders. uh no he's not but <laughs> i just saw tyler i just saw tyler lockett's price for the first time this yeah. dude is 5800 Bro, stack, stack, stack the I, I, Lockett should be thirty six hundred. I mean, <laughs> would he be in your cat? Would he be in your cash game show? No, I only play grown ass men, even in cash. Even wow, man, Pete is Pete is just gonna have the such. Nuts? No, your Sunday morning is gonna be miserable, dude. You're not ready for the for the two v two stress. <laughs> Dude, no, think about how stressed I am making six Galaxy Brain lineups. When I focus all my attention on a single lineup, it's going to be beautiful, Davis. I will, I will say that it's, it's a, it will be easier to create the cash game lineup than to try to think of the Galaxy Brain plays. However, you're going to be starting clicking. You're being like one, one play, one play is going to make or break it for you. So, well, send me a head to head kitchen, reverts the top 100. Kitchen, kitchen, send us all head to heads. Come on, dude. Come on. 
FF Come on, play. Uh, all right, on, but it play. can't be two dollars, Davis. I I can't play anything less than three dollars because of my stakes. It's well, that's not role. true. You can play. You can play. Um, but no. You, send me. Send I me. A te- send me a. Send me a game, bro. <laughs> Were you about to say a ten dollar head? <laughs> well, I was just trying to think of what I actually want to play you for. But you'll just play. You'll just play TJ's team or whatever. So it's not really actually worth. Oh it. no! I always play my own cash game team. Do you do you actually play cash games? Yeah. Did did you not see my FanDuel cash game team last week? Uh, it was definitely was not better than mine. Uh, I had it, I had the Stone Nuts last week. No, it it had David Johnson in it. So, there you go. Uh, well, anyways, da- David Johnson was like the literally the lockest of lock plays last week. And I saw you say in chat that you were going to tell uh, somebody else, Melvin Gordon over David Johnson. And I was like, can you, I, was, I mean, I was driving that day. So I, whenever I saw David Johnson go off, I was like, please tell me that David, Sammy and I, Sammy and I debated the, the David Montgomery. Um, no, uh, it was Melvin Gordon. Well, it was David Montgomery and Hertz versus Melvin Gordon and Mahomes. Um, so. These these two v twos are what I live for, guys. And you guys yeah. were all on Eckler too, and I was yeah. like, "No nah, wave." We even hey, Davis, talked about him. Did you get a fifty three hundred sent to you or no? Obviously no. These I for the chat yeah. dude. They're like, "Yeah, I'll play you, bro. I'll send you a game." The Swolcast chat never. I get zero head to heads from the Swolcast chat. Never. The fifty three hundred is what I'm sending Levitan here once I get off the show. <laughs> <laughs> Levitan, you ready, bro? Right. Prove it, week. It is a it's a big prove it week, and I know so better. so mid price wide receivers like with with high floors, maybe high ceilings. Robbie Anderson, Robert Woods. Who are some of these guys that you uh, you feel confident about in your lineup, Dan? Well, Curtis Samuel, Dan, Dan. I mean, stick to the team's motivation, right? So Woods, you mentioned we mentioned Lockett already, Jefferson. Um, I mean, if you're, but it also if you're playing two 4K running backs, as Davis suggested, we can spend up a little. So, you know, pay for these guys. Robert Woods, DK Metcalf, we mentioned. Honestly, DK Metcalf's going to just go insane this week. Uh, but even then, some of the Tampa Bay receivers, Evans is a little higher price, but Evans is fine play in that mid range. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm probably around, I don't know if there's anyone really all that interesting to me under dg Moore, tyler locker range until what about uh tossing on 19 condoms playing sterling shepherd 12 target game last week i kind of just want to take the disc uh, he he i wrote him down first before i wrote down slayton and now i'm kind of like just give me the discount on slayton yeah i think slayton's fine for gpps but shep's the the way to go in cash all right dallas wide receiver who is it peter Dallas wide receiver. Um, check the floor projections. I am actually going to check my floor <laughs> projections here. It's it's CD Lamb at fifty two hundred. Yeah, it is. Man, does anybody else kind of think Dallas just gets smashed? No, I think Dallas wins. Well, they're three. Point anybody favorites. other than the homer? <laughs> Nothing. Three point Don't look. Favorites. <laughs> yeah, anyone other than the guy with the. Prescott jersey in the background. Want to want to come there, bro? Know. Andy Dalton, bro. Come on, and they're gonna win a playoff game. Watch them, watch them fuck Dude, around and win a playoff a, game. That was the Davis. frustrating spot that we didn't see last week enough of, or further further enough in advance was was Dalton. I can't believe Sorry, we had to hit this children. with an explicit tag on Cash Game Week. I mean, this is supposed to be a family friendly Cash Game show. Sorry, Tuttle kids. All right. Um, <clears throat> FanDuel wide receivers. Marquise Brown still cheap. Yeah. Well, it's like I keep on coming back to like Robert Woods and Robbie Anderson. And then like you're going to have to gamble on the 5K receiver, like whoever it's going to be. There's just Marquise always Brown a good. Robbie Anderson. There's just always a good like cheap wide receiver on FanDuel. It's, it's, yeah. dude, it's, it's probably. Well, also, Emmanuel Sanders is still very cheap on FanDuel. Yeah, I mean, he has a guy that can't throw him the ball. Oh, that's true. I forgot. Maybe if Taysom started, we could do it. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's let's make a FanDuel line. What what about Kiki? What about Kiki on FanDuel? Yeah, 
Got to get the uh, PPR it, receiver on the half point PPR site. Is it slot wide receiver premium now? And I missed the memo, Davis. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I want to. I want to get key. I want to get Pete to play Fanduel Cash just to just so he can have the same awakening I had, where no. Fanduel Cash is just like literally. He like, needs. He needs at least four or five years of us telling him he needs to play on FanDuel. Before <laughs> so in 2025. I also need uh, at least four or five extra zeros after my balance to be accepting <laughs> head-to-heads over there. It's been right. tough in the FanDuel streets this year. <laughs> um, let's build a lineup. And uh, Tuttle, you start. I'm, I'm not picking this guy. <laughs> but, but but this is the site to play Dave's narrative because what Zeke is, what is, is only Dave's... 6,500. Oh, oh yeah. I'm right, not so... picking that guy. I'm going to pick another guy who's way too cheap. <laughs> only 200 more than Zeke, Miles Gaskin. I like Gaskin, it. Gaskin's Ooh. too cheap. This should be the motivation lineup. This is what this lineup should be. Uh, th- that's... Dolphins have to win to get in. Dave... <laughs> Every lineup in week 17 is a motivation lineup. If you're playing guys that don't have motivation to win, you're losing. You're paying the rake, but you're losing. All right. Well, I cannot wait to see your cash game lineup to see if you have anybody just out there. I won't. <laughs> All right. Peter, you're up. You know who else is really cheap over on uh, Fan? Everybody? <laughs> Literally everybody? <laughs> fair, fair. I find the cap actually incredibly restrictive. Um, <laughs> Kareem Hunt. I feel like yeah, that's not so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not loving that one. Okay, wait. What's our team so far? It's uh, Miles Gaskin <laughs> Miles and Kareem Gaskin Hunt. And Kareem Was Hunt. It, were we gonna Were we gonna play this one in cash too? No, or? Peter's gonna play this one in his cash game. Play. Um, you know, full disclosure. I will not be playing on FanDuel this week. Um, so I can't speak with the incredible authority that I'm able to about DraftKings cash. Yeah. But I do think Kareem Hunt is someone that will help differentiate your lineups in cash on FanDuel. Why do we want to differentiate yeah. our FD cash lineups? Because true. on FanDuel, <laughs> it's more important <laughs> to be able to access the ceiling in your cash games. All right. <laughs> um I'm going to go ahead and just throw in Robert Woods in this lineup. I Okay, does anyone else think it's weird that Kitchen has said a player's name like six times on a show yes. and it wasn't Derrick Henry? <laughs> I, 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 yes. Well, we've he's only got like, one I running like, back I like the conviction, left. though. I like the conviction. Well, there's just, he, he's the only guy on that team that's going to catch a pass on Sunday. Not a, not a Josh Reynolds believer. You hate yeah. to see it. I mean, you can right. go in I'm, a few I'm taking I'm taking Lamar and uh, Secaucus Brown. What? Yeah, I like it. That's that's the stack here. Yeah. So Lamar Jackson on FanDuel. and Marquise Brown. Sirs. Okay. Tuttle. Hmm. What do I want to do? I mean, it's it's obviously pretty tough not to just. Jam in Derrick Henry here. Okay, Derrick Henry. Yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just do it. <laughs> Dave made that decision so, so hard not for to. Tunnel. I will say I like. I mean, I mentioned it on on DraftKings, but I like it even more on FanDuel. Even though we picked Kareem Hunt, um, I like Kareem Hunt's teammate, backfield partner, Nick Chubb, quite a bit. Yeah, I think FanDuel. they're both. Yeah. I think they're both great plays. <laughs> yeah, that was a curious choice. <laughs> um, all right. Did you hear it's uh, slot receiver premium on? Uh, on Fanduel and Cream Hunt, glorified slot receiver for the team, guys. Yeah, he played one slot snap last week. <laughs> More than Nick Chubb played, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right. Um, if you go, let's see. Uh, ooh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Kittle at tight end because. I think he's going to smash. Yeah. Lot lot for him to play for this week. Yeah, what's the motivation narrative on this Big. one, Dave? <laughs> we got the motivation line up here. Bro, he looked he We're looked, all he looked. Let's just all admit it, we're all having a rough time with this lineup. Yo, he looked this fresh is, though. He looked fresh. K- Kittle looked amazing. He like looked, he did not and there he, were I mean, I know he was he whenever he'd come off the field, it's basically cuz they weren't going to throw the ball. Um yeah. when he when he was on the field, I mean, they were locked in. Obviously, 
you've got the uh, the shower narrative there with C.J. Beathard and and George Kittle. Um, so if I'm about to him, I'm about to win a bet against J.J. too. I bet him over one and a half one career and a half, starts for C.J. Yeah. Beathard. So gonna get gonna get that PayPal this week. You love to see it. All right. So that means if we went with like the Raiders defense against Lock then we would be left with 4700 left for a receiver. So let's try to find a $4,700 receiver. Yeah, Wait, what's who, who, uh, is Ricky Seals-Jones eligible wide get receiver? Out of, get out of here. <laughs> Wait, who's our other wide receiver? I only have Brown in my lineup right now. Woods. Woods, sorry, I missed Don't that. make me say his name. Oh, what is Duke Williams in the player pool? Let me look. <laughs> he is. Oh, boom, we got our play. 4500 easy game. Oh, and uh we've got a we've got it correlated. What with what? Gaskin. Oh, with Gaskin? Yeah. I, Gaskin. I I mean I I will just say to everybody, I I generally don't worry about kind of the secondary correlations <laughs> in my FanDuel cash lineups, but if it serendipitously happens, I This I, looks like I, a I, good cash game lineup. I thought I thought <laughs> Pete, I thought the direction you were going to go with that was I don't actually worry if my guys are called up from the practice squad or like active in my FanDuel cash games because that would have been a good Duke Williams. No, no, I can't believe when you were making a sarcastic reference to why this is a good cash game lineup, you said Kareem Hunt before George Kittle. I mean, at least Kareem <laughs> Hunt has something to play for this week. Yo, Kittle looked good though. Kittle, I, I Kittle has he pride good. to play for. He looks good. Pride to play for. He's in the Duke, JJ Watt camp. If Duke Williams gets a hundred yards again this week, 17, I need everyone in chat to apologize to me. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm yeah, sure. they will. They're, they're really high. Uh, they're really All high right. integrity individuals. So we have the Kittle take uh, for tight end. What are some other tight end takes? <laughs> it is the first week of January. No, you know, I mean, my main take is just, um, continuing to send DraftKings emails about changing Ricky Seals Jones designation <laughs> yeah. out of tight end to wide receiver. Okay. Uh, so Evan Ingram against Dallas. Solid. He is. Uh, 3, our, he, he's our number one value play. Okay. Uh, what about the Rams? If they go, you remember last, last year, there was big talk about 12 personnel. Wow, kitchen, kitchen, digging all the way back into. No, uh, you remember the, so without the D, if, the they, if they don't have a cup, year ago, if they don't have cup, well, they won't have cup. Okay, um, so last year when they didn't have cup, right? They went with like twelve personnel, and you had Gerald Everett. He's twenty seven hundred. No, nobody on board with Gerald Everett. I mean, I think the um, the two tight end set is really uh, – it's a valid point. I am worried about Arizona's cover two shell kind of yeah. limiting the tight ends. They generally scheme a lot of good matchups against the tight end. So if we're going to get our they hands in the dirt – They from their mistake from last year. Okay. All right. So what are some of the tight ends you like this week, Peter? Yeah. Um, Who's in your cash game shell yeah. right now? Because he <laughs> – you well, I'll tell you who's pretty not pretty much my... everybody so yeah. far. Well, I think there um, are some interesting plays here um, at tight end. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we're always looking for for value. I mentioned Austin Hooper over on DraftKings. Yeah. Um, I think he is uh, one of the premier plays this week. A lot of motivation here. Um, let me tab back over actually to the right tab yeah, here. Please. <laughs> Lots of motivation, yeah. What about what about Lee Smith? How's he looking in your projections this week? Big yo, Lee, game on primetime last yo, week. Who, who yeah. had the tweet that uh, he looked like the smelliest player in the NFL? He literally just looks that like a lineman. One. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, to me, that play was super obvious once Reggie Gilliam was uh, rolled out. It was definitely Lee Smith's season and all the donkeys that didn't play him and showdown cash are ruining the day. Okay. Do you want to, uh, Pete, do you want to do a secondary bit where we play showdown cash no. during the gill cast while we're recording it? I'd love to. And it's not a bit. I love showdown cash. One of the highest edge games out there. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some guys that we have referred to a few times on the show. Number one, Cole Komet. Will you get burned by him once again, Davis? 
I'd love to. 100% and 90% of the snaps last two weeks. Six targets okay. last week. Uh, <laughs> they even tried to give him the Chase Claypool end around. Yes, it was one of yes, the most majestic things That's I've ever hilarious. seen. They tried to treat Cole Komet like he was Chase Claypool, his old college teammate, and uh, he got tackled for a three-yard loss, and it, it was really ugly. <laughs> so, yes, the answer to that question is I will be losing money on Cole Komet again this week. Okay, and another guy we've talked about repeatedly, Kyle Rudolph out this week. Um Irv Smith Jr. at 3900 title. Do we got a narrative? We Justin don't Jefferson a sloppy lot. seconds. <laughs> yeah, there's not much narrative there, but he's he's been balling. Can you believe people did not play him in Showdown Cash on Christmas? Can I, you I, believe I, it? I couldn't believe it, man. If if you didn't play Irv Smith in Showdown Cash on Christmas, send me a head to head right now. Just take honestly. your head to head game. <laughs> All right. Uh, other Minnesota's got a no pretty fan. high team total. No fan solid. Mark Andrews. Gasicki. Any Gasicki takes? It depends who the quarterback is, man. I think the quarterback honestly is kind of br- kind of Tua. brutal for our guy Tua to, if he got benched here. It just is not a good overall look, you know. Yeah. Fool me once, shame on me. All right. Um, <clears throat> Any other tight ends before we move on? It's okay. it. I Let's mean, it seems then. like there there will be a good tight end, but we just don't know who it is yet. There will be yeah. some team. I mean, One of the Ingram, things. The guy uh, on draft I don't know. Teams. Yeah, I don't know. If backup so tight cheap. ends is where I want to gamble, Davis. You didn't. You didn't play Parham last week, bro. I did. I did. I played him in my uh, Watson stack. A little. A little Christmas well. Parham. Oh, field, coming guys. coming to a Patreon title <laughs> near you. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Uh but yeah, like I don't I don't know if if I'm if I'm wanting to gamble on a backup tight end uh on week 17. But that's just me. But everything else in week 17 will be super stable and predictable. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> I feel like tight end needs to be solid tight end is typically one of the core staples of my cash game lineup for week 17 because you know what they're going to produce. Ugh, the like, head to heads else... are flowing in right yeah. now. How guys. many do you how many do you have right now? Uh, what, I can check my Gmail because I get the notifications. I'm up to 160. Hey, Peter, let me. Um, let I me have 100. You... I have 184, but I'm posted. OK, cool, Davis. Um Peter, let me give you some sage advice. Yeah, I'd love it. From a from a cash game player. Yeah. Don't worry about what you're doing. Like as far as like you just build the best lamp you can. You don't worry about ownership. Don't worry about other people's like the the hype or whatever, whatever. Let the other player, let your opponent make the mistake. Yeah. Let them make the mistake. You play the best plays. Don't get caught up in and all the other stuff going on. Let your opponent make the mistake. You play the best plays. Can I can I tell you what I'm rooting for? This. I'm I'm rooting for Pete to need to make a swap at halftime, like something <laughs> something to have gone wrong, and for Pete to have to navigate head to head swapping because I I truly think that would provide the best entertainment for the show. And if and if you do that, Peter, here's some more advice. You go on DraftKings on the desktop obviously and you sort your opponent's score and then you see like well, if you use you the if you swap. well if you use the rg extension you can see how much salary your opponent has used i will uh be individually going through every head-to-head even the free <laughs> ones that were sent to me and making sure i'm making oh, no. game theory optimal swaps in every one of those contests uh i want to tuttle do you have any advice for me it seems like everyone's kind of chiming in with some cash game advice i do really uh respect your opinion yeah, I mean, just on the on the swap thing, just make sure to go into each individual head to head and make it for each one. Don't do like a global swap. Um, just make sure you assess the situation. Yeah, closely. every yeah. situation is unique and, and relative one, to yeah. what your opponent is doing. Yep. It's oh, also man. a key to just like bitch and complain as much as possible when your team is not doing well. It really enhances the experience, and it'll it'll let you know what everyone else does every Sunday. Just complains for seven hours. Okay, and last piece of advice for maximum entertainment, the late night hammer, which is now the late afternoon hammer. There are so many late afternoon Wait, games. This is Kitchen's so trademark thing. Yeah. So I yeah, love the late hammer and cash, all, man. So you're just like, you're just climbing, <laughs> you see you're winning, just boom, boom, 
boom. And then also with all the late games, we have what we call the Telk. This is Laffy, Dave Lochran. Uh, he uh, basically came up with this and it's tilt enter late contest. So let's say that you play Lamar Jackson. He doesn't do well in the first game. And you know that you're dead in a bunch of your games. You tilt enter the late contest. There, there are going to be so many late contests, head to heads, cash games. You can tilt enter all those with a bunch of games this week. So there you go. That's the uh, the late game advice. Uh, Peter, before we leave, any final thoughts for the show before you dive into the cash game pool? Yeah. Um, you know, I know I was pretty serious on the show this week, and uh, I know sometimes you guys come here for laughs, but uh, I have a lot of money in play this week, and I didn't want to mess around. I wanted to talk about the best plays, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with all that GPP bullshit, and I'm I'm looking forward to this new era, and I appreciate you guys uh, staying focused on the show today too, and and uh, getting yeah. rid of our you know tomfoolery. I appreciate it. Yeah, Davis, final thoughts. Definitely a um, you know a low tomfoolery show, which I think is important. We got to learn from a DK pro, David Kitchen, yep. you know about yep. <laughs> about uh, DraftKings cash, which is great. Um, everyone. Send me head-to-head invites on DraftKings. Davis Matic, Davis. M-A-T-T-E-K, is my username. Um, but I'd it has to... to be over two dollars because Davis this... is oversubscribed. <laughs> it actually has to be over. It actually has to be over five dollars. I am. I am. I am, I am filled up. Um, Davis telling yeah. Pete on this bit and then losing everything would make I, the highest I, I'm viewing get... of the take cast i'm gonna get crushed ever. yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna get absolutely stone cold smoked this week um it'll be a real duke williams robert foster situation <laughs> all right title last thoughts before uh before we get off here how much i'm just uh i'm just ready to support my my buddy pete here in in this endeavor i'm very proud of the the man he's become and uh look forward to to seeing him succeed in the future Thank you guys i appreciate that yeah all right. Um, shout out to everyone that's been with us throughout the regular season. I think we might even be back for playoffs, at least a, a few weeks, one or two weeks. Um, why Why can't we just do it? I thought the idea, the thesis behind the full cast was that it's a weekly show forever. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that's, it's subjective, Davis, like to, we have to we have to see like how this whole cast did this season. How many people subscribe to the no days show. off, kid? Should we have a performance review episode? Yeah. Yeah. I would <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we the- bring Dan Bach on to give us all performance reviews? Davis, did you fill out a work log yet? I don't have to yet, dude. It's only the thirtieth. Oh, okay, <laughs> Got a I, couple days. I all send right. I send I do it the same day I do. I just do everything in the last day of the month. All right. Well, Dehember, December is coming to an end, but always remember that Dehember is a mindset. Also, uh, Dehember is spelled D-H-E-M-B-E-R. I've seen a bunch of different spellings around of it. I appreciate the concept getting out, and I appreciate everyone that's going to be cheering with me on Sunday. So that will do it for the Swolecast this week. Thanks, everyone, for sticking with us throughout the season. We'll see you next week for the playoffs and to let people know how Davis and Peter did on the Swolecast here on Rotogrinders.com. Mm-hmm.